Hi, my name is Alfred Castillo. I'm a student at Florida International University, Chapman Graduate School of Business uh, in the MIS field, Management Information Systems. Um, what I'm going to be doing with you guys today is I'm going to be showing you how to configure a router or a series of routers uh, to work in a set environment, uh, the environment we actually configured. Okay, here is the environment it was configured. Uh, this was drawn in basically by dragging and dropping these icons on the left into here. All of these are Cisco 2691 routers, all these, and these are just simple switches. As you can see on the left side, you have the accounting department, and hence the accounting switch. And on the right side, you have the sales department, and therefore the sales switch on the right side. There are three routers interconnecting these. There is no link between these two routers, R2 and R3. Um, basically, they're going to have to communicate through R1, which is a top router. This would be kind of like a border router for uh, a fixed, uh, given environment. Now, in order to configure these, the first thing we got to talk about is um, how to design the subnets so that they'll fulfill the needs. Um, that's beyond the scope of this class, so what we're going to do is uh, I already have it pre planned. <laughs> you just follow along. Here's the design. This is the same topology you just saw in the in the uh, application CGNS3. Um, and what it's broken down into is there are four subnets here. Um, the subnet on the left for the accounting department is 192.168.10 with a slash 24. Uh, slash 24 is cedar notation, which means it's basically telling you how many bits belong to the sub to the um, network ID. So 24 bits belong to network ID that leaves eight for the host portion. So the last eight bits are for all the hosts on this side of that router. Uh, next is between router three and router one, there is a serial connection. This serial connection is 192.168.5.4 with slash 30. Notice how the, that only leaves two bits for the host portion. The reason we only leave two bits for the host portion is because we only have two NICs here. We don't want to waste address space using a bigger chunk of the address space. All we need are two bits. On this side, same deal. On the red side, we have 192.168.5.8 with a slash 30. And for the sales department down here, we have the green, which is 192.168.20.0 with a slash 24. Okay. Now that we have determined what the subnets are going to be, the next thing we got to figure out is what IPs we're going to be using. And that we have already predetermined. For the dot four network over here, which is between the routers, we have uh, dot five on the top and dot six on the bottom. For the dot eight network over here on the right side, we have dot nine and dot ten. And then for the full class, for the full uh, address space given to the accounting department on the left, we are taking dot two fifty four for the router. Right here, that, that interface. And on the right side, same deal. For the uh, sales department, we're stealing 254 for the router, and the rest of it will be addressed to the hosts on that segment. <laughs> With that said, let's go ahead and start the IOSs on these uh, 2600 routers. By pressing the play button, it'll automatically start the uh, emulators for these routers. Now, we're using an emulator here in a learning environment, but uh, they're very, very similar to uh, physically being consoled in to the router if you had the router. Um, this is more for a training environment. If you don't have GNS3, I suggest you download it. Um, it's this graphical interface, and it's back in this Dynamips, which I'm sure if you're into the emulators, <laughs> you're familiar with it because it's pretty popular. Okay, what I'm going to do is open up the console and see how the progress is going for these routers. It should be going through post right now. We'll probably see a bunch of text spit out. Uh, looks like this one's done posting. Um, this one's still in, on the bootstrap portion. 
looks like. Let's look at router three. Router three is not giving me any text just yet. Chances are it's probably done as well. Okay, the first thing it's going to ask us is uh, would you like to enter an initial configuration dialog? Yes or no? Uh, I always say no to this only because the initial configuration dialog asks you for very specific questions um, in order to initially configure a router or a switch and I don't particularly like it because it's not all the options so if you get lazy and use it you're gonna have to use command line anyways so might as well just configure it yourself let's say no to this one as well one thing you notice is that these iOS's they, they the CLI for the Cisco devices just spit information at you as you as you go. You just get used to that. You can turn it off, but we're not going to. That's beyond the scope of this class. So just deal with it. Whenever it spits stuff at you, you can just continue pressing enter and it will scroll that text out of off screen. Okay. R1 is the top router. R2 is the router on the bottom right. And R3 is bottom left. If you, if you get lost ever, just look at the top of uh, the command prompt, this, this console port simulator, uh, and you'll see that it'll have the device simulator right there. R1, R2, R3. Okay, let's configure R1. I'm going to bring up this diagram again, which has the IPs, which is the first thing we're going to configure on these routers. Okay, right now we're in user exec mode, which is very limited. Uh, you can do a very, very, very low level uh, basic show commands here. You can't do anything fancy. Um, for security reasons, Cisco has developed a layered structure to security. So if you ever access through a console port, if you're able to ask, access to the console port, there usually is a console password for you to access, which brings you into this mode. And then when you type in enable from here, it brings you into the privilege exec mode. And from this mode, um, you, there's usually a password associated with it as, as well the enable password okay from this mode we're not going to be able to do much so we're going to hit configure terminal which will bring us to the global configuration prompt this global configuration prompt is where you can do um, a lot of your configurations you'll get into specific mode for something interface uh, configuring a routing protocol configuring any of your interfaces um, you'll notice that uh, in global config which is where we're at it just says config here um, the first thing I'm going to configure are these interfaces now, now I don't remember if this is serial 0 or 1 so I'm going to take a look at the diagram real fast and serial 0 is on the left okay so let's go interface Serial zero slash zero. Notice how it changed to config if for configure interface. So this is specific mode for that serial interface. Any commands I type now are going to apply to that serial interface. And like I said, we're going to apply an IP address 192.168.5.5. And serial notation was 30, which is 205.205.205.252. By default, these interfaces are shut down, so we're going to do a no shutdown which will bring the interface up. Now you see it spit some garbage at you telling you it brought the interface up and then the line protocol up so you'll see it give you plenty of information on it. Let's configure the other interface. The other interface is serial 01 if I'm not mistaken. Let's glance real fast at it and make sure we're right. Serial 01, yes it is. Okay interface serial zero slash one IP address I'm not sure what it is because I can't see it 5.9 is the IP address 192.168.5.9 cedar notation is a slash 30 which is a 255.255.255.252 mask as before we're going to do a no shutdown bring the interface physically out I'm going to exit. 
I'm gonna exit again, go back to my user purge mode, my purge exec mode, and from this mode, I'm gonna do a show IP int brief. Which is gonna show me all my interfaces. Notice 00, zero is configured 5.5, .5, which is what we wanted, and 001 is configured 5.9. Um, status is up on both uh, land protocol is going to be down it's going to change zero, zero oh there it goes change zero zero one land protocol down because even though I told it to turn the interface on there's nothing connected to it yet on the other side because we have not configured router 2 and router 3 yet so status is up because I turned it up protocols down because it can't talk right now Let's go to router 2, which is bottom right router, this one. Let's scroll this over here so we can see it. And then router 2, here we go. Let's get out of user exec mode and go into privilege exec mode by typing enable. Let's get into global configuration mode. Let's type configure terminal. Let's go into the interfaces we want to configure. Now, which interfaces was that? Let's take a glance see which zero interface we connected okay we connected zero 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 to router one so let's configure zero 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 and that is 5.10 IP address 192.168.20 I'm sorry 5.10 mask uh, it seems it didn't like it Oh, I didn't type. <laughs> I didn't type the interface in. <laughs> interface serial. We talked about the interface, but I never went into it. So here we go. Interface zero zero zero. IP address one nine two one six eight dot five dot ten two five five two five five two five five two five two mask. No shut. Now turn these interfaces back on. It'll spit some garbage at us, letting us know I turned the interfaces on. What's the other interface we need to configure for that uh, router? For router 2, we need to configure F00, fast Ethernet 00. Let's see what IP that is. we assigned it. We inside it 20.254, so let's go ahead and do that. Interface. You can go straight into it, or if you don't want to, um, may, maybe it helps you understand it better. Just hit exit, get, go back to global, uh, global mode, and then from here, go interface. Fast Ethernet um, 0 slash 1. If I'm not mistaken, and I am, because it's 0, 0. Okay, now we're back into the interface. From here, we're going to type IP address 192.168.20.254.255.255.0 mask. And we need to shut, we need to turn this back up because it's down. So we type no shut. It's going to give us some information right now. Let us know it's turning it on. And let's go ahead and get back to purge exec mode and let's do a show IP interface brief. Um, you can use shorthand. I like using shorthand. I'm just I keep backspacing because I keep forgetting to uh, type all the commands for everyone watching this video. So here we go. Notice how the protocol status now for my serial port is up, and you'll notice that this one came up as well. See, interface serial zero one change state to up. As soon as I configured the IP and they were able to communicate on that serial connection it brought both ports administratively back up well not administratively I turned them administratively up but it brought the LAN protocol up so you're able to communicate the reason you're able to communicate on the faster Ethernet device on that port is uh, because this switch is turned on and it is plugged into the router and that's good enough <laughs> that's good enough uh, there is a basic configuration on this switch they're all on VLAN 